Hello and welcome to the Discover History YouTube channel and today I decided uh, to have a look at medieval medicine. Uh, the reason for that is we do a lot of workshops in schools, we also do a lot of talks and living history where we often cover medicine and we actually cover medicine for any age in history. If you look back through our videos, I did one on trepanning and I actually showed you a flint trepanning tool that I own, uh, a replica one obviously. So we could say we do medicine from as far back as the Stone Age and we go all the way up to the 1950s covering the NHS basically, the birth of the NHS and the early years of the NHS. Um, however, today I thought we'd have a brief overview uh, with no horrific tools of surgery. Um, basically, I'll give you an overview of medical care for your average person in the Middle Ages. So, if you were ever ill in the Middle Ages, a lot of people would have turned to the closest people around them. In other words, if you're feeling unwell, you turn, for example, to your parents, and that's very much like we do today. And your parents would probably have passed down through the family some natural remedies, some cures. In other words, your parents might say, oh, you've got an upset stomach out in the garden. Uh, we've got a mint plant growing and all you need to do is take a few leaves and chew on mint for example and it amazingly does actually settle the stomach. So the first put of call when anyone was ill was usually their parents. Other than that a lot of people did actually go to church and they would pray to have their illness taken away. If you go back even as far as the ancient Greeks, the ancient Romans and so on, they would go to uh, to the gods basically and hope that the gods would take their ailments and injuries away. By the Middle Ages, there was also several saints that were associated with different illnesses. For example, um, if you wanted uh, to have head pain go away uh, some people suggested praying to uh, St Thomas Thomas Beckett and as we all know he had his brain spilled out over the floor uh, in, in the Middle Ages so we associate head injury head pain with Thomas Beckett uh, one of my favorites is St Erasmus who was disemboweled using a windlass and he is obviously the patron saint of stomach disorders. So it is quite interesting, really. Um, so people went to the nearest people around them for medical care, and they also believed in the church. But then, if they needed specific help and they couldn't uh, get it at home or at the church, they would then go further afield. And we're not talking travelling miles, we're talking about speaking to someone in the village, town or settlement they live in. Because in the Middle Ages, there was a lot of people usually given the name the wise woman. And it's the wise woman that would have some form of cure for you. Often, absolutely mad cures. Um, for example, it is recorded that if you went to a medieval wise woman and you had, for example, or suspected that you had the plague coming, the Black Death, uh, very simply, she would suggest one of the treatments to wear a frog around your neck and that would obviously ward off any of the pestilence, for example. By the way, don't try that at home. Um, it doesn't actually specify if the uh, frog should be alive or dead at the time. I doubt you really want a dead frog around your neck, but then do you want a live one hopping around as well? But if you don't go to the wise woman and that hasn't worked for you, then you have to pay for some pretty expensive treatments. We're quite lucky living in 2020 because we now have the NHS and we have done since the late, late 40s. However, medical care, even for our ancestors, even our grandparents, for example, pre-NHS days, you would have had to have paid for it. And that's the same in the Middle Ages. And there is technically a choice of three. And this drawing that I use when we do talks and go into schools is actually very, very good. It's a very early medieval drawing of three forms of medical care. And hopefully you can see the three on there. At the very top here, there are some clues to what this medical practitioner is doing. Um, for example, there's a set of scales just of here. 
and some strange plants, herbs and what looks like mushrooms and so on, on a table. You also have this iconic item here, which is the pestle and mortar, a large version to what we often have at home. And then there's also someone stirring a kettle, stirring a pot in the corner. Well, this person here, these people at the top there, are probably the herbalists, the apothecaries really. And these were the ones that made use of plants and herbs to make people better. Very much as I often compare it to a chemist is today because there were certain laws in the Middle Ages to stop all these jobs overlapping. And one of the laws actually stated that the apothecary, for example, was allowed to administer uh, all sorts of lotions, potions and preparations, but was not allowed to diagnose. And you get a lot of that in the Middle Ages when you have the guilds. And it's the guilds that are very, very powerful. And it tries to keep order in society, prevent people doing other people out of a job. Um, but the apothecary was actually a very good one because we now know that herbs and plants are useful and in a way a lot of people are going back to it. They're often uh, having alternative medicines and if you look at some of the medicines that we commonly use today, for example aspirin, they take the acid from uh, tree bark for example, from willow bark. So we are in a way subconsciously using some of the techniques that the herbalists and uh, medieval apothecaries used to use. But then uh, you've also got the medical practitioners down in the centre here, and these are your doctors, the physicians as such. Um, it's quite an interesting picture because you have a man uh, being forced to hold his head over a fire. Well, that's actually a fuming pot, and what would be on there are all sorts of preparations thrown onto the coals, and he is breathing it in, so a bit like... Uh, the equivalent of someone uh, using uh, an inhaler, for example, to inhale something into the lungs. Not advisable, by the way. Um, one of the treatments for toothache years ago was to actually have sulfur poured over onto a fire and then you breathe in the sulfur fumes and it kills off the tooth worms that cause toothache. That's a story, that's a video in its own right. Um, but the apothecary is above and this is the physician or doctor. You will notice the finger on our physician here is held up like so. And that's because they believe in the old way of doing things, which people like Hippocrates came up with, which is ask the patient what's wrong with them. And if you go to the doctor even today, they will still do that today. What's happened to you? Where does it hurt? And that is actually what's going on there. They're questioning that person. Um, these people also believed in the idea that we were made up of four humours, four elements, and an imbalance of one or the other uh, would cause illness. And the best way of finding out what was wrong with a person was not just to talk to them, but was to also take a urine sample. Uh, that sample would then be checked against all sorts of charts. It was smelt. They even tasted it to see what was wrong, and then they could treat you accordingly. A lot of physicians as well were also blood letters and they would bleed a patient, not necessarily with leeches, sometimes with something called a fleam or blade. And you would bleed a person and create balance in their bodies again. Now, the final image, the final picture of this comic strip of medical care uh, is the surgeon at the bottom here. By the 15th century, the surgeons had actually grouped together and formed what was called the Barber Surgeons Guild. And the Barber Surgeons were people that cut hair, they shaved a patient, uh, and they also uh, carried out proper surgical procedures, uh, trepanning of the head, removal of an arm or a leg. They even set bones. And we often think of the Middle Ages as the age where anything you damage, it was cut off. Well, actually, they did try and repair it first. From archaeological remains, we do find evidence of broken bones healing. We also have evidence, as I said, for the trepanning operation working as well. But they all have to be paid for. To be honest, even visiting the local wise woman had to be paid for in some way or other. So hopefully this has given you a little bit of an overview of medical care for an average person in the Middle Ages. 
Uh, hospitals were generally uh, no-go areas, really. They were starting to become, especially by the 15th century, as something more like a bed and breakfast for people. That's one of the reasons why Henry VIII closed a lot of them down. Um, if you were rich, the doctors, the physicians and so on came to you. So you would have your operation done at home. Hospitals were generally for the lower classes, the poor people. But we have to say... We have to take our hats off to the NHS because since their formation in the late 1940s, we have had absolutely fantastic care. And obviously during COVID-19 that we're living through at the moment, it's the NHS that are working on the front line. And I applaud them as we all do every Thursday night to thank them for their hard work. If there's anyone listening to this from the NHS, I want to thank you directly. Thank you on behalf of Discover History for all that you do. And in a way, look back and be so grateful that we've got you and not these mad people. Anyway, stay safe and we'll see you soon.